So, I am here to speak to you about leadership lessons from the garbage can. Most people think that when they need a mentor that they need to look outside themselves. I'm here to share a story that proves that you don't. So I grew up in Detroit. I've been living here all my life and my mother is mentally ill. And so as a result, my childhood was very difficult, very difficult, so much so that when I turned 17, I decided that was enough. And so on the day that I was supposed to leave to go and register for my last year in high school, I caught the bus to the home of a guy that I met at the mall. That was a bad idea, by the way. Um, and I effectively became both a runaway and a dropout at the same time. And I stayed with him, and that was not a good move. I didn't know him, and he was almost as abusive as my mother, but in my mind, he was better than her, so I stayed. And we lived together. And even though I was a high school dropout and a runaway, I was very industrious. I had two jobs. I was a bagger, making a whopping $3.80 an hour. And I also worked at a, an unnamed restaurant that pumps cheese and makes sandwiches. You do not want to know the name of this restaurant because it is not cheese. I worked there as long as I possibly could until I started waking up and feeling nauseous and sick. So guess what? I was pregnant. Awesome, right? It's great. So I was pregnant, and so I could not work. And the individual that I was with had no jobs, so that meant that we had no income. He was four years older than me. I was 17 years old. So ultimately, we became homeless. We couldn't pay the rent on the motel that we lived in, and so we had to leave, and we ended up on the street. And this is a picture of where I slept. This is not exactly what it looks like because that was 25 years ago, but it's the same building. I slept under a box compactor on a brick. A box compactor apparently compacts boxes, I guess. Um, and that's what I did. And during the day, I would go and sit in the park under, I'm pretty sure, that tree. And I would watch people live their lives. But even when I was homeless, I had a work ethic. I would still panhandle on average five to six hours a day, every day. Um, I got virtually nothing. And as humiliating as that was, having to ask people for food or for, for money, um, it was worse when I saw the looks on people's faces when I saw them deliberately trying not to see me. I've never forgotten those looks. I still think about those looks. That's a hard thing. Eventually, I got to the point where one day I was watching a Little League baseball game happen and they had tons and tons of food and I was hungry. I was hungry every day, all day. And when you're hungry, when you're really hungry, all you think about is food. And so I don't know who won, I don't know who was playing, but they had a lot of food. They had fried chicken, I still remember. And then after that game, I was ravenous and I went over and wanted to find something to eat. So I had to go to the garbage can and I ate from it. I had found a big pristine looking container of coleslaw that had been unopened. And despite the fact that it was a reasonably seasonal spring day in about April or so, um, I ate it, the whole thing. And guess what happened? I got food poisoning, and that very tree is where I became violently ill. I thought I was gonna die. I was trying my best to hide the fact that I had um, food poisoning, though I was homeless, that's very difficult to do, but I got through it. And eventually I became very skittish in eating, and I got to the point where I'd almost not eaten for almost a week. Thankfully, we ran into a homeless person who told us about a shelter, and I was able to get into that shelter. So what does this mean in terms of leadership? What did I learn? I learned a lot about myself during that time and the time after because that wasn't the only time that things were rough for me. I learned that I'm incredibly resourceful. I learned this because when I finally had my baby who was relatively healthy, he was a bit jaundiced, but he was healthy and incredibly happy. 
Um, I had a crib that someone gave me, but I had absolutely no tools. And I found a butter knife and spent eight hours putting that crib together because I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't hurt my baby. Eight hours. It was so well put together that eventually when he grew out of it, I could not take it apart. We had to like get it out and just put it on the side of the road. I learned that I'm a committed person. I learned this because when I went to go back to high school to complete my high school diploma, which I did in two months, by the way, I did not get assistance from my worker in terms of bus fare. So I had to take my baby and put him in a stroller and I had to go look for bottles and turn them in for the deposit to cash them in to get bus fare to take the bus to and from school. But I did it. And I learned later, a few years later, when my son finally turned five and I graduated with my first degree, and I still didn't know how to drive a car, because that's one of the things you don't have when you have a mom that's sick. You don't get to learn a lot of things that other people know how to do. I still can't ride a bike. Um, and I couldn't drive. I didn't learn how to drive until I was 25. I caught nine buses a day for two years to get to a job to take care of my son. Caught four in the morning and five on the way back because I was too tired to walk that last half mile. So what did this teach me? What's my big idea, my big takeaway? Live with your future self in mind. Seems simple, but there were times when being in the reality of my now was so hard that I had to think about in the future, if I were to look back and imagine how I dealt with this scenario, how would I want to feel? What, I, what would I want to think about what I did? And I started that when I was a young person, and it still works today. It works on big major life decisions, and it works when you have 10 more reps at the gym. It's pretty awesome. Living with your future self in mind. So, that's a picture of me when I was 17 with that little happy baby. Oh my God, he's so beautiful. As you can see, there's terror in my eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, um, absolute terror. But because I chose to live with my future self in mind and went through a lot of hard things, this is us today. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful? He's beautiful. 24. And so I just leave that with you, a story that hopefully helps you to find your inner mentor and to also recognize that even though really bad things happen to everybody, it's the great equalizer, you can still grow from those things and become exactly what you imagine that you might be if you keep your head up and keep moving forward. Thank you.